Hello everyone. Today we will create a race map for the track we will play on, showing the player's progress as well as the opponents, all using a plugin I recently created. The plugin is free and you can download it from the channel's Discord. I also made a dedicated channel there to discuss any issues you may face with the plugin and to share your suggestions for improvement. I want to clarify that our system does not rely on anything that consumes a lot of system resources, such as camera 2D capture. And from my experience, its resource consumption is almost zero. So yes, you heard correctly. You will create a race map that does not put any load on the game, and professionally. The plugin is also very easy to use thanks to the interface I designed. Just a few clicks and you are ready. Before we start, I ask you to watch until the end because I will say some very important words about the plugin that you will need to know. So, without further ado, the video will be easy and creative as usual. Let's start. First, we need to download the plugin. I have already uploaded it to GitHub, so you can download it from there easily. Then, go to your project folder and create a new folder called Plugins if you don't have one, and unzip the files there. Open the project, and I should also mention that this plugin only works on Unreal Engine version 5.4 and above. Any version below 5.4 will not run it. After opening the project, go to Plugins, where you will find the plugin I created, and it is already enabled, so there is no need to do anything. You can also check all the plugin files if you want, but you don't need to modify anything. As I said, all you need is just a few clicks. Next, you will find all the map settings here, and I will explain the purpose of each setting later, but for now, we need to assign two things. First, the actor path, where you need to assign the spline actor you created for the track that we used earlier in the series. If you don't have one, you can simply create a new actor and add a spline component inside it. Next, we need to assign the player actor. For me, I will set it here, and you can leave the rest as it is. If you want to change the player indicator shape, you can do it here, but I will leave it as it is because I like the current shape. That's all for these settings. Then we just need to display the widget in the viewport. For me, I will put it in the player controller, but you can put it anywhere you want. Make sure to select the correct widget and click Add to Viewport, and that's it. The last step is to add spline info to the player. If we test now, as you can see, the minimap appears and shows the track as well as the player's location on it. There are still some adjustments to make before getting a perfect result, but this is acceptable. Next, you can display any actor or element on the map, and its position will update in real time easily. I will now add the opponent cars. Go to the relevant section, create a new actor for the cars, and assign a color for them on the map. I will set white for now. Then choose the slate brush for your actor image. You can create a new one or use a simple ready made one from the plugin files. Here, you can also adjust the size that the actor will appear on the map. The last two settings I will explain after testing. As you can see, the car's positions are clear on the map and update smoothly along the track. If you don't want to display all cars on the map, but only a single one, this is where the just one specific actor setting comes in. You enable it and assign the instance number you want, for example, three. Now only the selected instance appears on the map instead of all copies. 
A small note, you must enable just one specific actor, otherwise this won't work. Regarding the other settings, the first ones control the map center and zoom scale. If you change them, the center moves instead of staying in the middle, so I recommend keeping the default values. Next is rotation type, which determines how rotation works on the map. Currently, the player stays fixed and the map rotates in the curves to create a straight line view. If we change it to rotate with player, the map rotates along with the player. And if you choose no rotation, the map will remain static. This depends on your preference. Next is the map border. If we disable it, the map appears without any border, clean and simple. Enabling Draw Simple Map Board shows a small black circle as a border. You can also assign a specific shape as a map border to personalize it. Don't forget you can adjust the map's transparency between 0 and 1. The last setting is Add Shear, which tilts the map slightly for a unique visual effect. I will set it to 5. Then we go to Path Settings. Path Colors sets the track color and other path settings control the appearance, smoothness, and style of the track line. Path thickness adjusts the track width. Max side value determines how far the player indicator can move left and right, which should be adjusted together with path thickness. Update path at runtime decides whether the path is drawn every frame or only once at the start. If the track doesn't change during gameplay, it's best to turn it off. The remaining settings are debug tools to help understand the system and troubleshoot issues. That's all about this system. What I want to add next is very important. This system is still in beta, so you may encounter some problems or non-perfect experiences, especially since I haven't tested it on engine versions above 5.4 yet due to my continuous work on improving it. To provide regular updates and to see the issues you may face while using the plugin, I invite you to join the channel's Discord. There you will find continuous updates when any new version is released, and you can share your problems and suggestions to improve the plugin. Your presence is very important and gives me greater motivation to continue. Thank you for following the video up to this point, and see you next time.